Hi people, look at this cutie! I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's so small, I mean, so cute! Um, Sorcery of Thorns has to be not only my Margaret Rogerson favorite book, but also one of my favorite books, like, ever. I did love the idea of having sentient books, um, having books that had, like, feelings and had reactions and they could be more gentle or more aggressive, and to have this idea of having librarians uh, taking care of books, but not, like, taking care of books like we do here, but, you know, nursing them back to health and also um, taking care of the more rabid books uh, so as they don't arm people and everything about this society and how it works is amazing. And then you have uh, magic and sorcery thrown into the mix and you have an amazing character for me, Silas, who was like, wow, I'm sorry, Nathaniel, but yeah. <laughs> for me, he eat the cake. And also he can turn himself into a cat, so yeah, he was perfect. And um, yeah, I do love the world that Marger Margaret Rogerson created in Star City of Thorns. So I was very excited when she announced that she was going to write a novella called Mysteries of Thorn Manor. This one uh, has been published like yesterday. And yeah, I mean, I just couldn't put it down. I read it in like one go. It is so good. It was so great to be back with Nathaniel and Elizabeth and Silas and seeing how Thor Manor works and the things that the, the manor does. I mean, because if we have sent, sentient books, why cannot we have a sentient house? So what we are going to find in this book, um, we are going to pick up where we left in the first one. And uh, we are going to see how the manor begins to act strangely. Uh, where things are happening and Nathaniel and his magic are not the ones to blame. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. And uh, they figure out that they're doing something that's upsetting the house. So they are going to have to do something to fix it. And I'm not going to say much more about it because it's a short novella, uh, like 160-ish pages. So yeah, the less you know, the better. So you can enjoy it like, you know. I enter into this one knowing as little as possible and I want to do the same for you. But yeah, I mean, we are going to have all the shenanigans that we are used to between this trio and we are also going to have Mercy who is going also to be working in Thorn Manor. And yeah, what we can expect? Amazing characters. This is something that I did love in the first one. Nathaniel is going to be his self. <laughs> He's going to be doing sorcery, uh, he's going to be checky, irreverent, and he's going to care more than he shows about Elizabeth. And Elizabeth is this character, um, I love her and I love the relationships that she has with both Nathaniel and Silas. Um, because it's not like a love triangle, she loves both of them for different reasons. But it's not, you know, it doesn't feel like one of those love triangles in which, yeah, I like you and I like you and I want to kiss you both. No, it's more like... I love you in a sense in which you are like kind of a romantic partner and I love you because you are a great friend friend, and I care for you. And this is amazing to have this kind of love, you know, represented in a book. And yeah, because not all love, I, I, I mean, love, it's not this unique thing. You can love different things, different people, uh, different animals in different ways. And I, and I think the love is ever expanding and, you know, I love to have here. Um, for me, I care a lot for the relationship that Elizabeth has with Silas, uh, who she sees beyond the veil, if you want to call it like that, and how, um, you know, the little tales that he has um, that allows her to, to try to gouge what he's feeling and what he's hiding. And for me, that's amazing. And caring for him like a person, because he's a demon, but, you know, how far the demon goes and how far the person goes, you know, I mean, it's amazing. And yes, I love it himself. I mean, for me, he was the best character in the first book. Uh, when apparently Margaret Rogerson killed him, I was like ready to throw the book away. <laughs> yeah, because he was amazing. And I was like, he has to be back. He's a demon, you know, he has to be back. And yeah, he wasn't. Yay. <laughs> So yeah, for me, it was amazing to see him here, and I love how this novella ends. I'm not going to make any kind of a spoiler, but I, I, I kind of feel that we can have more novellas, that we can get back to this world, because it's like, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, <laughs> I love that. 
I love the cute story that we have here. I love why the manor is acting up. I love what they have to do to fix it. I love the relationship between the characters and I love that we get to explore more about this world. So if you love Sorcery of Thorns, you're going to love this one. The narrative is exquisite. Um, the story, as I say, it's amazing. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's a very courtesy in a way, a story, but also it has like dark moments in which you are glimpsing uh, about uh, the true nature of Silas and, and, you know, what he can do and, you know, and what ties him to his human form and all of that. And yeah, for me, he was the one that stole the show in this book, as in the first one. And also Elizabeth, who, for me, it's an amazing character. And we are going to be exploring things like the fact that women uh, at, at the time, and even in the past, in this, uh, the past that, that they talk about in this book, how women sometimes weren't allowed to participate in society as much as men, and how that created this imbalance. And I love that um, this kind of thing also is uh, referred to in books. Like, women have the rights to do the same things and the abilities and capabilities of doing the same things and the gender barrier has to be torn down. So yeah, I mean, lots of amazing things in this one. So do yourself a favor and pick it, pick it up because it's amazing. Thank you for watching. Bye.